No more I hail the morning's golden gleam, no more the wonders of the view I sing. Friendship requires a melancholy theme, at her command the awful lyre I string now as I wander through this leafless grove, where tempests howl, and blasts eternal rise. How shall I teach the corded shell to move, or stay the gushing torrent from my eyes? Phillips. Great master of the boundless lyre, the wood my soul racked muse attempt to paint, give me a double portion of thy fire, or all the powers of language are too faint. Say, soul unsullied by the filth of vice, say, meek eyed spirit, where's thy tuneful shell, which when the silver stream was locked with ice? was wont to cheer the tempest ravaged and aloft as the filmy veil of evening drew the thickening shade upon the vivid green, thou, lost in transport at the dying view, bidst the ascending muse display the scene when golden autumn, wreathed in ripened corn, from purple clusters pressed the foamy wine, thy genius did his sallow brows adorn, and made the beauties of the season thine, with rustling sound the yellow foliage flies, and wantons with the wind in rapid whirls, the gurgling rivulet to the valley highs, whilst on its bank the spangled serpent curls the joyous charms of spring delighted saw their beauties doubly glaring in thy lay, nothing was spring which Phillips did not draw, and every image of his muse was may so rose the regal hyacinthile star, so shone the verdure of the daisied bed, so seemed the forest glimmering from afar, you saw the real prospect as you read, majestic summer's blooming flowery pride next claimed the honor of his nervous song, he taught the stream in hollow trills to glide, and led the glories of the year along pale rugged winter bending o'er his tread, his grizzled hair bedropped with icy dew, his eyes, a dusky light congealed and dead, his robe, a tinge of bright ethereal blue his train a mottled, sanguine, sable cloud, he limps along the russet, dreary moor, whilst rising whirlwinds, blasting, keen, and loud roll the white surges to the sounding shore nor were his pleasures unimproved by thee pleasures he has though horridly deformed the polished lake the silvered hill we see is by thy genius fired preserved and warm the rough october has his pleasures too but i'm insensible to every joy farewell the laurel now i grasp the you and all my little powers and grief employ a mortal shadow of my much-loved friend clothed in thy native virtue meet my soul when on the fatal bed, my passions bend, and curb my floods of anguish as they roll on thee each virtue found a pleasing cell, thy mind was honour, thy soul divine, with thee did every god of genius dwell, thou was the helicon of all the nine fancy, whose various figure tinctured vest was ever changing to a different hue, her head, with varied bays and florets dressed, her eyes, two spangles of the morning dew with dancing attitudes she swept thy string, and now she soars and now again descends, and now reclining on the zephyr's wing, unto the velvet-vested meat she bends, peace, decked in all the softness of the dove, over thy passions spread her silver plume, the rosy veil of harmony and love hung on thy soul an eternal bloom peace, gentlest, softest of the virtues, spread her silver pinions, wet with dewy tears, upon her best distinguished poet's head, and taught his lyre the music of the sphere's temperance, with health and beauty in her train, and massy muscled strength and graceful pride, pointed at scarlet luxury and pain, and did at every frugal feast preside, black melancholy stealing to the shade with raging madness, frantic, loud, and dire, whose bloody hand displays the reeking blade, were strangers to thy heaven-directed lyre content, who smiles in every frown of fate, wreathed thy pacific brow and soothed thy own thy own virtues and thy genius great, the happy muse laid every trouble still but see. The sickening lamp of day retires, and the meek evening shakes the dusky grey, the west faint glimmers with the saffron fires, and like thy life, O Phillips, dies away here, stretched upon this heaven ascending hill, I'll weigh the horrors of the coming night, I limitate the gently plaintive rill and by the glare of lambent vapors right wet with the dew the yellow hawthorn's bow, the rustic whistles through the echoing cave, far o'er the lee the breathing cattle low, and the full avon lifts the darkened wave now, as the mantle of the evening swells upon my mind, I feel a thickening gloom. Ah! Could I charm by necromantic spells the soul of Phillips from the deathy tomb? Then would we wander through the darkened vale, in converse such as heavenly spirits use, and, Born upon the pinions of the gale, him the creator, and exert the muse but, horror to reflection. Now no more will Philip sing, the wonder of the plain when, 
doubting whether they might not adore, admiring mortals heard his nervous strain. See, see, the pitchy vapor hides the lawn, not but a doleful bell of death is heard, save where into a blasted oak withdrawn the scream proclaims the cursed nocturnal bird now, rest my muse, but only rest to weep a friend made dear by every sacred tie unknown to me be comfort peace or sleep Phillips is dead tis pleasure then to die few are the pleasures chatter to ne'er knew, short were the moments of his transient peace, but melancholy robbed him of those few, and this hath bid all future comfort cease. And can the muse be silent, Phillips gone and am I still alive? My soul, arise the robe of immortality put on, and meet thy Phillips in his native skies.